Coming up on World's Greenest Homes. In Illinois, a home with walls so smart they can keep it warm. The idea is that the solar energy can come through the glass and heat up the stone. And in Australia, the home built over the side of a cliff without harming a single tree. The tree actually moves around by about 10 inches in heavy winds. I'm Emmanuel Beliveau. Come with me on World's Greenest Homes and see the most extraordinary homes on the planet. Homes that are gorgeous, cool, and green. Chicago, gateway to the Midwest, where architecture and style have a long history. But just 100 miles west of the Windy City lies a rural retreat that might as well be a world away. We're in Oregon, Illinois, a land of rolling hills and meandering rivers. The owners of our first green home wanted to use as many natural materials as possible and leave a small footprint on the land. Meet Kent and Kathy Lawrence. This is a second home for them. Kent works as a lawyer in Chicago, and Kathy's a website administrator. One day soon, they'll retire here full time. This is nice, having you do all the work. <laughs> Inside this 2,200 square foot home, there's an open concept living and dining space, with a kitchen tucked under the stairs. Directly above the kitchen is a home office overlooking the living room. Back on the ground floor, along the hallway, is a master bedroom and bathroom. A little further down, there's a guest bathroom and bedroom. They built this arts and crafts style home in keeping with the green philosophy, and they named it Kickapoo, after a Native American tribe that once settled on the land. This truly is beautiful. I can't wait to see inside. I'm Kathy. Emmanuel, nice to meet you. Nice to I'm meet Kent. You. Kent, nice, nice to meet you. you. Real pleasure. Wow, this place looks great. Thanks. I love this open concept feel. It's huge in here. Thanks. Thank you. We like it here too. The major theme of the house is inside blends with outside. That means big windows and a lot of wood. At its highest point, the ceiling is 18 feet, and it's all done with sustainably grown timber. What kind of timber are you using? Well, the roof is, or the ceiling, I should say, really is Douglas fir. And it's been stained with a water-based stain. And these great tall windows, they seem to frame the trees outside. Don't yes, they? yes. Yeah. A lot of trimming on those windows. There's five layers of trimming on the windows. All that detail. It, it all builds almost, that depth, right. you know? They are uh, triple pane, argon gas that's uh, inside of it. So even cold winter, you put your hand near the window, it is not cold. Argon gas is a poor conductor of heat making it a great insulator between window panes. That helps prevent heat gain in the summer and heat loss in the winter. What a selection of this particular sofa. This was really mainly done for practicality. Is it cushy? Uh-huh. Like it? Ah, oh, it's cozy. It's not only cozy, it's actually a sleeper bed too, so you can actually <laughs> put more people in this small house. Aside from the not-so-green leather couch, every stick of furniture is handcrafted by the local Amish community. And look at that fireplace. Yeah. That's, That's a stone, stone from the same stone we used in the hallway. Now, is this a gas? Uh, this is propane, actually. Okay. And um, we can make it go on for you. Oh, what a beautiful flame, too. Thank you. You guys would just sit back here and relax and watch the fire? Well, well actually, e even better, because these gliders, these Amish gliders, both of them turn. So if it's just the two of us, we can just face right into watch. the fire. Can you imagine a better evening than sitting here, reading a book, and watching the fireplace? I can't. I really can't. <laughs> Love it. So what's your favorite place in the space? Probably the kitchen. That's where everyone goes. <laughs> sure. It's a beautiful kitchen. Thanks. Making the most of a small footprint, the kitchen is tucked underneath the loft, and every available space is used for storage. The granite countertops? Yep. They're called Verde Meadow. Verde Meadow. Right. Verde being green? Green. Okay. The kitchen floors, like everywhere else in this open concept room, are bamboo. 
Any fear of water or anything like that? You know, bamboo flooring is one of the most durable floors you can get. It's equal to oak, if not even stronger than oak. And as a matter of fact, when the house was built, they had the floor down first. And then they brought in all their saws, all their heavy equipment to put up all the rest of this stuff. All of the cabinets and even the fridge are cherry wood veneer. Well, it's a beautiful kitchen. I love what you've done with it. And you have more Amish furniture, I take it? This actually is a great table because the space is so big. We can really put a lot of people yeah. here if we wanted to. This would expand seat 12. This dining room is an amazing space to have a meal or sip a coffee and watch deer grazing just a few feet away. Another storage idea is the bench. You can lift the cushion off oh, and lift the cover up and then there's a buzz. Oh, and this opens up here. Uh-huh. So you thought of everything. Every nook and cranny is well used. Trying. Because when you're talking about a greenhouse, the biggest thing is not to have wasted space. Right. And that means if you do a little thinking, in the small amount of space, you can get a lot of usefulness out of it. You don't have to be as big. So that's, that's a major concept with the house. Right. Keep on saying this time and time again. The first R in the, uh, in the recycling circle is reduce. Yes. Right. Smart. Yes. All right, so what have we not seen yet? The loft. The loft. All right, let's look at the loft. Okay. okay. Let's check it out. Oh, this is wonderful. The loft, with 360 degree views, functions as a home office for Kent and Kathy. That's yeah, a conference center for us. It's also a double cockpit office. It's the whole nine yards. The desk surface is marmoleum, which is recycled linoleum over compressed wheat straw. Now the structure up here, you're much closer to it. You can see everything. There's a lot of beautiful detail up here. Like the detail right here is incredible, the way all the wood comes together. Uh, the builder was, was really swearing when uh, the architect said to him he wanted no trim on those edges, <laughs> on those lines. But afterwards, the builder said, uh, you know, you're right, that really made a difference in what it looked like, and it does. It just, that, that is, I think, probably the most, the foremost element architecturally of the whole house inside is the ceiling. Well, it is so dominant, the color of the wood, it really draws the eye, it is warm, it is a beautiful feature of the home for sure. Now, being a passive solar home with heat rising being an issue, does it get warm up here? Actually, we haven't found it uh, uh, to have any problem with that at all. I mean, partly it's because of the fans. We've got two fans that are up here. There are also the windows that you can open in terms of venting it out. But I haven't really detected, even on a hot summer day and no. even in the uh, afternoon, that it's been a problem. Got a fantastic view that must inspire the workload? Mm -hmm. It certainly does, except for one wants to look at that instead of doing the work. <laughs> but... The windows up here offer a 360-degree view of the property. But arguably, one of the best views is on the inside looking down at the living room. You've got a view outside the house and you have fantastic views inside the house. The wind turbine provides enough energy to power around half of the home's needs. Now that's not the only thing that they're doing to save on energy costs. Instead of putting these solar panels on the roof, compromising the look of the house, they installed them here, 200 yards away. We shift it twice a year. We fairly recently moved it in an upward position, more vertically for the summer sun that's more overhead. In the winter, we drop it two or three feet further down to cover the southern horizon sun. So how do you get the energy to the house? Underneath here, there's a trench cable that puts these two together and goes right into the house. And back in the house, what do you have on the floor here? Oh, this is actually a recycled product. It's tiles that were broken or chipped that have been reground and made into new tiles. So this tile actually looks nice, but I don't care for it too much in use because out here in the country where you've got a lot of gravel on your shoes, it could tend to pit this. So, oh, so it's too soft? Right. Yeah. This wouldn't Should be, a, be a choice for me the next time around. This is the master bedroom. The master suite, very nice. And I love this wall. I just love how you have this natural stone in here. It's beautiful. And I love these windows up there. We have 105 of those windows in this house. 105 windows. Yeah. Now, is the purpose for that have board light coming in? And also have ventilation. You want to be able to open up these windows and have air come all the way through. Your bed? Again. Uh, the Amish furniture again, as <laughs> is the quilt, which is also from uh, Amish country in, uh, in Ohio. This quilt is gorgeous. And uh, I notice you've got a, uh, another bench here. Another That's bench. Right. Guess what's underneath there? Storage. You got it. Yeah, okay. Let's look at this. And you've got more storage going on. You've got a closet space over here, it looks like. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. And the master bathroom. That's right. right. Well, let's check that out. Okay. Oh, it's yep. lovely. And what do you have on the floor? Again, this is um, oh, a what? stone. And, and it's, it's heated. And it's heated. That's right, like that. it's heated. This one's just an instant electrical one, so you can turn it on and off fast. This is recycled glass. But it's not transparent glass, is it? No, no it's, it's, uh, it's smoky. I've never actually seen it with a really soft texture to it. It's nice. Right. Yeah. And I see you have his and her sinks. Right. Very nice. Something different about your bathroom, though, is that if you are using your sink, you're looking at the view as opposed to a mirror. It makes sense to have the mirror here because you don't need to have mirrors all over the place. Down this hallway, we've got our second guest bathroom here. Okay. And then down the way a little bit is our uh, guest bedroom. Oh, I see. Once again, the high ceilings is very consistent throughout the house. The wall along the hallway is a solar or trom wall. It provides around 20% of the heat for the house. The idea is that the solar energy can come through the glass and heat up the stone, and it becomes a heat bank. What is the thickness of this wall? It's about what looks like eight, eight to ten eight. inches. Anyone can build a solar wall, and it doesn't have to be made of limestone like Kent and Kathy's. You can use poured concrete with fly ash, recycled brick, stone, metal, glass, or even a water tank. The most effective place for a solar wall is directly inside south-facing windows. That way, the wall will absorb as much direct sun as possible. The wall stores heat collected from the sun's rays through the day, and at night, after sunset, the heat is released keeping things nice and toasty until morning, when the solar collection process begins all over again. Out there, when, when we can. There's still one more place to see at the back of the house. The gazebo deck. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. Oh, this is great. What a great view you've got here. And another fireplace outside. That's right. Yeah. The reverse side of the inside fireplace. Although this one's a wood burner. Okay. You have propane on the inside and wood propane outside here. Wood out here. And still more of the same stone. Same stone. Oh my goodness, this place is fantastic. You've got four peaks in here. Yeah, it's a bit of an engineering miracle, wouldn't uh, you say? Yes. Oh yeah. All this kind of works together. Do you guys spend much time out here? As yeah. much as we can. Everything out here, from the deck to the table and chairs, is made of recycled material. Is this plastic? Uh, yeah, recycled milk jugs. It's very heavy, oh, so the wind really doesn't blow, yeah, the wind does not blow it off. It's comfortable, yeah. despite looking very hard. It's very yeah, comfortable. I'm not going to take your word for it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I want to sit down. Try okay? it, try it. You tell me. You tell me if that isn't comfortable. <sighs> that's cozy. That's right. Now, this is oh, no, that's too right. comfy now. That's right. <laughs> Pretty big project, took 14 months to do. Had an architect, a builder, who had to get along in building this project. Right. How did you guys get along? Oh, well, it was easy. Yeah. <laughs> no. Kent just said, go ask Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true, most of the time it is. Yeah. Kent and Kathy look forward to the day they'll spend all their time here, in a home designed to be eco-friendly and blend in with its surroundings. It's beautiful. You've got a beautiful property, a beautiful house. Thank you. And the great part is it's all green. Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks again for everything. Pleasure. Thank you. We appreciate the tour. Good trip back. Thank you. Take care, guys. You too. Bye-bye. What's fascinating about Kickapoo is the location of the house on the property. It's a great example of how you can still get that beautiful view to the north while still maximizing on your solar gain to the south to efficiently heat your home. Living in a treehouse is something we dream about as kids, but is it possible to live amongst the trees and not disturb the forest? Our next homeowner went out on a limb and built the treetop haven he's always wanted. We're in Australia, at a suburb called Hunter's Hill, just 10 minutes from Sydney Harbour. This lush Sydney suburb is home to movie stars like Kate Blanchett. It's also a protected rainforest. From the front, this could be any other suburban Aussie home. But the real surprise is round back. Two stories of glass and steel cantilevered over a rock face. It's the ultimate tree house, but not a single tree was cut down to build this leafy super home. Stephen Isaacs and his wife Lisa Saville are the architects who designed the house. They live here with four-year-old Levi and baby Raffaella. 
When we found the site, we knew that we wanted to, in building on it, disturb the site as little as possible. The entrance hallway leads to a sleek galley kitchen with lots of concealed storage and their space for a family room. Next door is the dining and living room, which opens out onto a deck high in the trees. Go down a level and there's a master bedroom with master bathroom. Along the hallway are the kids' rooms. And finally, a colorful library with its own rock. Welcome to the treehouse. Coming through here, we have the kitchen. We designed it in a way that we can put away everything and conceal all the mess and the clutter of, of everyday life. The glass splashback slides open and one can conceal the kettle, the toast, or the knives, or, um, all those things, you know, and if people come over, just quickly shove everything in and close, close the, sliding, the sliding panel. And they discovered a bonus. They make brilliant whiteboards, so whenever we've got a message or an appointment or shopping list, it gets written on the splashback. Well, the kitchen design was almost always paramount to me. Um, I love cooking, and the kitchen is where everything happens. I love the way it works. It's easy with a young family. And with the family room as part of the kitchen space, it means they can keep an eye on the kids. But it's next door where you begin to feel you're really up in the treetops. The main living space is a simple, lofty, clean, white space that's dominated by the light that comes flooding in through the windows and the views of the trees. The views of the treetops up above, the tree trunks below. We have a, a large recycled iron barked table uh, which is extremely heavy, very hard, uh, and the idea is that it can, it can age and, and grow and get a patina of age with us, so we don't mind if the children you know, scratch it or scrape it or um, draw on it. We want it to actually age with, with the house. All of the wood inside the house is either recycled or secondhand. The floors are uh, secondhand black, but they came out of a convent in Sydney that we sourced by just phoning around and really doing a lot of research to find materials as part of our philosophy of keeping the, the house as sustainable and as environmentally friendly as possible. And it's all sealed with food grade oil for a natural finish. The children can literally eat off the floors and it also means that there are no, there are no volatile organic compounds being off-gassed out of the furniture. But the big idea behind the design of this house is that you're inside and outside. When these sliding doors are completely open, um, the two spaces, the outside space and the inside, work together as one. And it really it enables us to have that, that iconic Australian lifestyle. The deck cantilevers off the living room, hanging over the cliff right out in the rainforest. There's even a eucalyptus tree growing through the deck. Because the tree moves in heavy winds, we needed to, in some manner, accommodate the movement of the tree. At the same time, we needed to make sure that, that there wasn't a gap big enough for a child to, to fall through. So what we arrived at was creating a timber surround to the tree, which actually moves with the tree. So the timber square around the tree actually slides with the tree as the tree moves around in the wind. Drop down a level from the main living space and you'll find the bedrooms. This is our master bedroom. Waking up in the morning every day through the seasons of the year, we watch the sunlight on the mangrove swamp um, as it kind of wakes up from early morning and spreads across. We watch the birds going across, we watch the kookaburras in the trees, we hear the creaking of the tree. I don't know if that's a curse or a blessing, but it is my personal quiet space here. Adjacent to the master bedroom is a small ensuite bathroom. It's kept really simple and understated, so we avoid things like marbles and granites that have to be imported from overseas and have a lot of embodied energy in the transport of them. But here's a bit of familiar technology that was developed in Australia. The toilets are dual flush. Um, what that means is there's, there's a half flush button and a full flush button. Uh, that's an Australian innovation that's been around for decades and conserves water, uh, which is then augmented by us actually using rainwater to flush the toilets. Along the hall is Stephen and Lisa's Rainbow Library. 
where all the books have been organised according to colour, just because we thought it's a more interesting and decorative way of doing it. And you, you can ask Lisa for any book you're interested in and she will tell you, well, look in the green section and that's where the book will be. The space opens out through sliding doors onto a small deck with a very large rock. A feature of, of the, this part of the house is the huge sandstone boulder um, that sits here adjacent to the deck. It serves a great benefit in terms of cooling the house because the, the rock is always cool. On really hot summer days we wet the rock and the air moving over the wet rock gets cooled down and is then drawn into the house. When was the last time you cooled a house with a rock and some rainwater? Bet it's one of the few houses around here without air conditioning. <laughs> Levi's room is off the library and like the rest of the house has traditional Aussie louvered windows for more natural air conditioning. Next door is Raffaella's room. When we had um, our first child, Levi, and when we were looking for a cot, we tried to find one that was finished with natural materials that wouldn't um, off-gas and release chemicals because a child spends the majority of its time sleeping in a cot and their systems are so much more fragile. So it was quite a serious concern for us. We couldn't find any product that had a natural finish. That's because in Australia, you aren't allowed to sell unfinished baby furniture. So we landed up buying a cot that was finished, stripping off the paint and repainting it with a natural paint. The second bathroom is next to Levi's room and has more spectacular treetop views. With room for the washer and dryer too. The laundry is neatly concealed behind the cabinetry. We have an energy efficient a dryer and a water-efficient washing machine which uses water from the rainwater tanks. There is one downside though to living in a rainforest. But even in the wet Sydney winters, this home still gets the best out of the weather. The roof form has been designed as what we call a butterfly roof so that it comes together with a large gutter in the middle, the water is collected, taken into the rainwater tanks and there it's used for the garden, the laundry and flushing the toilets. But you don't have to build a butterfly roof like Stephen and Lisa to collect rainwater or have a huge tank to store it in. It's easy to collect enough water to use in the garden. If you have east troughs, then you probably have downspouts too. You can get yourself a rain barrel from your local hardware store and have your downspouts empty into them. Your backyard will love you for it. We wanted to minimise the impact of construction on such a beautiful untouched site. So the house sits on eight columns, steel columns, which sit on top of um, concrete piers which are bored down into, into the rock below. Um, and those columns then support steel beams which forms the framework for the house and then the rest of the house is clad with timber framing and the metal cladding um, externally. Now that they've been in their cantilever treehouse for a couple of years, Stephen and Lisa just might be getting the hang of it. We had to get to know the house and how it operated with the climate. So we've gotten to know it now, haven't we? It's just about living a little bit more consciously about the environment and about the, the planet around us. What really attracted us to it as well is the fact that it's an opportunity for our children also to grow up in touch with nature, to be able to run and play in the bush, you know, to build tree houses. And that's very rare living in a city in today's world. Lisa and Stephen have managed to mix the best of both worlds, live amongst the trees with the city at their doorstep. It's a green dream home, all without disturbing a single tree. <laughs>